In this video, we're going to look at another rule involved with taking the derivative of a given function. So last video we looked at how to simplify a function that may have suggested using the quotient rule to take the derivative, and we simplified it so that we could use the power rule and kind of use that approach instead because the quotient rule would have gotten a little bit more messy. In this case, just like the last case, there are multiple ways you can go about this problem. If you see a function given like this, our first instinct coming from where we've come from in math is to multiply this out. Do all this multiplication, distribute all these terms, and make it into one long polynomial instead of the product of two polynomials, which is you can perfectly allowed to do that. But in this case, the question specifies us to specifically use the product rule. So if we see this on a test, we want to know that if we're specified to use the product rule, we want to know how to use the product rule in order to take a derivative like this. So like I said, if you're given free reign and can take the derivative however you want and you choose to use the power rule, there's nothing holding you back from that. It's perfectly fine. You just have to simplify this function a little bit beforehand. But in this case, what we're going to look at is using the product rule to differentiate this function. What the product rules tells us is that for our given function, the derivative of it will take this form, and I'm going to call for this video, I'm going to call this function h of x and g of x, just because it'll, it'll make more sense when I get into the notation of what I'm about to write here. So what we have is when we take the derivative of this, it'll take the form of the derivative of h of x times the original function g of x plus the original function h of x times the derivative of g of x. So this is what we're looking at. And before we can use the product rule, we need to check and make sure that on their own, these two individual pieces, these two factors that are part of the multiplication, can be differentiated on their own. So if we look at x to the fourth minus 10, we know it can be differentiated by the power rule, and the same can be said for this quadratic that we have here. So we know they're both differentiable, so we can use the product rule. So what I'm going to do is in order to find f prime of x, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over here and do a little bit of scratch work. Namely, what I mean by that scratch work, h of x equals x to the fourth minus 10, and then I'm going to try to find h prime of x. And the same can be said for g of x being equal to this quadratic that we have. And I'm going to try to find the derivative of that, because that's what our product rule tells us we need to have. We need to have the two original functions and their two derivatives. So what's the derivative of h of x? Well, we can use the power rule here. We know that a constant evaluates to 0, so we don't have to worry about that. We use the power rule here on x to the fourth, so we bring that power down, times x, subtract 1 from the power, so we get 4x cubed as our derivative. Okay, so that one's done. What about for g of x? We can take the derivative of g of x by using the power rule on each of these pieces of addition or subtraction because the sum of the derivative or the difference of the derivative is the derivative of the sum or the derivative of the difference. So if we want to take these derivatives individually and then add them or subtract them together, we're more than welcome to do that. So let's take the derivative first of 2x squared by the, using the power rule. So we're going to take this power, bring it down, so 2 times 2 gives us 4x, 2 minus 1 is 1, so we have 4x. Now we know that taking the power rule of 5x, 5 times x to the 1, we're going to bring that power down of 1, so this 5 is going to stay the same, so we multiplied it by 1, but then 1 minus 1 gives us 0, x to the 0 is 1, so we just have the constant 5 as our derivative of this term, and we know that when we take the derivative of a constant, it evaluates to 0. So, once we get to this step, we have the four necessary pieces of the puzzle that we need in order to take our derivative of the original function f of x. So what we're going to do, we're going to come down here, and we're going to use this framework that we wrote down to figure out what our derivative looks like. So first we're going to plug in h prime of x, which is 4x cubed, and then the next part of our puzzle tells us to plug in g of x. g of x is right here, so we have 4x cubed times 2x squared plus 5x minus 2. And then after that, we're going to add the product of h of x, x to the fourth minus 10, times g prime of x, which is 4x plus 5. In calculus, once we get done using the process that it tells us to use, namely to derive a function using a specific rule, or when we get to integration integrating, what 
we are concerned with is that you know how to use the different derivative rules. We could go forth and, and distribute 4x cubed, multiply these two binomials, simplify, combine like terms, and all that good stuff. But from what we've done with limits up to this point, and from what you guys have been exposed to in math classes prior to this, we already know that you know how to distribute terms, multiply binomials, and combine like terms. So we're not necessarily worried about assessing that. You can go ahead and do all this multiplication if you want to and this adding and combining of like terms and all that good stuff, but it's not required. So once you get to a step like this where you're done with the process of the question, namely in this case, we have derived, we found the equation for our derivative. We found it. Or not the equation for our derivative, but the function of our derivative, rather. So we don't have to worry about making it simplified and nicer. This is our derivative. It can be written in many equivalent forms, but this form is perfectly fine.